Hi all, we're going to look now at Karpov's third victory in the classic 1994 Linares tournament. This is another ultra positional performance, contrasting strongly with the style of Kasparov and Fischer, who used to go for more knockout blows. Here Karpov playing black, he plays b6 here, and after g3, bishop b7. So we already have some tension on this diagonal, which Karpov is um, aiming to neutralize White's Fincetto bishop. After e6, knight c3, Karpov is not afraid to lose his dark square bishop here with bishop b4 and threaten some structural damage. White ignores it and just castles. So Karpov could have just doubled White's pawns, but instead just castles here. And after queen c2, he plays rook e8. So he's like provoking White to play a3 and collect the dark squared bishop. After d4, Karpov simply voluntarily gives up the dark squared bishop now and plays d6. So he's increased his influence over the e4 square by taking on c3. And there's a very interesting maneuver now coming up. After knight bd7, bishop b2, he plays bishop e4. And there's a kind of virtual pin. White doesn't want to um, exchange off that Fincheso bishop because later then, you know, black could get the queen to b7 and there could be some nasty tactics on this diagonal. But there's another point here, I believe, that Karpov has simply vacated the b7 square. So later he can play c6, queen c7 to b7. So it's a way of rerouting the queen onto the b7 square. After rook a c1, rook c8, this is a nice prophylactic move, so c6 can be played, and white is even more stopped from playing ever d5. One of Karpov's plans, I believe, here is to fix this dark squared bishop to this d4 pawn, like an earlier round, but intriguingly he doesn't even mind weakening this diagonal, as we'll see. So after rook fd1, c6, queen b4, he plays queen c7 to protect d6, and after queen d2, now queen b7. So we see now this all wouldn't have been possible without that earlier bishop e4. Queen f4 now, and we'll see later the white queen slightly misplaced as a tactical target here, as, as the game went. Now Karpov played d4, so the master of positional play, the Steve Davis of the chessboard, earlier gave up his dark squared bishop and now is weakening his dark squares, putting all his pawns on light squares. So why on earth would he be doing this? I think one reason is simply just to fix white's dark squared pawn. He doesn't mind about this diagonal, because there's no exploitable weaknesses um, so easy um, as, as, a, as a side effect of that diagonal. Bishop f1, and now he plays b5. So he's also got some horrible pressure on the queen's side. So white doesn't want to lose the tension in the centre by playing c5, because then later, you, you know, white would have to face a potential e5 from black at some point. c5 is usually a considered a strategic mistake. White took on b5 and played knight e1. And now Karpov played queen a6. I believe he's trying to tempt white to play a3 to limit the scope of that bishop. And if there's going to be any exploitation in this diagonal, it will have to be done more slowly, as in the game, with bishop c3 to b4. This h6 move now threatens in some variations g5, which will become critical later, especially where if white is ever tempted to play e3, this queen cannot reverse back into white's position. After rook takes c8, rook c8, rook c1, now Karpov provides an interesting little ghost of a threat. He plays knight b8. I believe the ghost of the threat is to take on c1 and then play knight c6, increasing the pressure on d4. So white decided to just play e3. However, you'll notice that the reverse, reverse direction of the queen is now not working. White's queen is now an even more of a tactical target, which, as we'll see, costs white a pawn and later the game. After queen b6, bishop d2, knight d7, reinforcing f6, and also black is able to play now e5 as a, as a pawn sacrifice if necessary. After bishop b4, a5, Karpov has really set white up now, dangerously, 
for a tactical fall. Because after bishop e7, can you see Karpov's next move? Give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. He played e5. Because now, if d takes e5, have that as a new variation, g5 is simply winning the white queen. Pretty vicious tactic from an otherwise sterile game. So e5 was played. Fortunately, white has queen h4, but he does lose a whole center pawn for virtually nothing. So black's got a big advantage now, just the pawn up. Kopov now plays d4, and now queen c6. So this queen is invading, potentially. Bishop takes f6 was played. Knight takes f6. Check, king h7. And now at least white regains the pawn on b5. However, although it's level on pawns now, Karpov's queen is able to penetrate that, that dangerous first rank. And white's pieces are very passive. So like the earlier round, Karpov has succeeded in gaining better quality pieces. And as black. So knight d3, queen d1. Some horrible threats are emerging here. Knight c5, and he calmly retreats the bishop back to g6. And after king g2, knight e4. Powerful centralization of the knight. Bishop e2, queen e1, with horrible threats of queen takes f2. So white desperately takes on e4 and plays f3. But Karpov has a very powerful passed d pawn here. So even though it's equal on pawns after bishop g6, white is struggling here. h4, Karpov simply blockades that pawn with h5. And after f4, bishop e4 check, bishop f3, Karpov plays g6. So he's making sure h5 is protected from this queen takes h5 threat. And after bishop e4, queen e4, this passed pawn is just getting stronger and stronger. In fact, it's a big advantage to black, according to Ribka. d3, and the advantage is increasing with every step. Queen c4, and now Karpov plays queen e2, queen d1, queen d2, queen d1, queen e2. Progress is being made. And now king g8. So Karpov doesn't mind white's checks. So we have a few more checks now on the black king. But inevitably, d2 will be played. So after queen takes b3, Karpov is now a pawn up again. And now again it's equal on material, but again Karpov has better pieces and an increasingly large advantage. After queen c2 check, king h3, d2, the pawn is unstoppable. Queen d5 and now king c8 and the, the checks will run out. White actually resigns here. Let's have a quick look at one variation. Queen a8 check, king c7, check, king c6, check, king b5. The black king can simply march up the board. And this pawn will be unstoppable. So king a2, and here, king takes a3, or even king b2, is enough. Because now, king b1, king c1, and that's the point where this d-pawn will crown. So the checks would just be running out. Let's um, have a very brief overview and summary. Karpov played ultra positionally, giving up his dark squared bishop, and seemingly going a bit crazy in putting in, then his pawns on light squares. So he weakens this diagonal. But uh, white created a, a tactical target with the queen being virtually trapped on this king side later. And Karpov's ghost of a threat with knight b8 caused this terrible looking e3 move, locking the queen in. So when the knight returns to d7 here, there was this menacing tactical threat now of e5 to be followed by g5. Kampov first forced this bishop to a horrible place, and now e5. So just winning a pawn. But interestingly, Karpov, you know, he gave back the pawn quite readily because there was some pressure on his b5. But he ended up with better quality pieces. And he used these better quality pieces to increase the strength 
of this past D pawn, which proved decisive. So it was an ultra positional performance, and Karpov ruthlessly allowed his king to be checked virtually up the board if necessary, completely up the board in this final position where Wright White had resigned. I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.